Hey there. Alright, so this time around we're going to be doing, we're working with leather and beads. And what I have here, I have four strands of leather. They're 15 inches long. I've got two strands of wax linen, which are 12 inches long, and one strand of the wax linen, which is two feet long. And this is the wax linen that I'm using. Um, you should be able to source natural, you know, finished raw, un unbleached raw wax linen out of your own. This, actually, I was lucky enough to inherit it with my dad's knot tying supplies. Um, so, I'll be very sad when that runs out. The leather I'm using, it's 1 8 inch, and it it's Art Mines, and you should be able to find that fairly easily. Alright, and the rune, I'm, the beads I'm using this time around, these are metal Nordic rune beads, and these are 13 centimeters in length, and I got these off of Amazon. You should be able to find those fairly easily too, as well. So the tools I'll be using are my scissors, I've got a knitting needle here, and you'll see what that's going to be for, because we're going to be doing a Turk's Head Knot today. And a small glass tube, and again, this is going to be for the Turk's Head Knot, and you'll see what we're going to be doing with that here in a little bit. I'm just going to set those off to the side and out of the way for the moment. Same with the scissors. And uh, just a binder clip. So this size binder clip. So what we're going to do is the binder clip is going to help us hold on to our cords. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match up the four ends of the cords and form a bit of a box with them. It's where they're all matched up with their tips. And this is a little bit of a fiddly bit to do and that the cords are all stacked on top of each other making a bit of a box and what that's going to do is just going to give us a good spot to clip it and hold on to our cords. Alright so once we have our strands in the clip we're going to make sure that we continue down for about two inches keeping all of our pieces of leather together then we're going to take one of our one foot length strands of the wax linen and we're going to leave it not really centered but with about what is that a good three three inch tail coming off and this is where we're going to want to tie a bit of a knot and what that does is it helps hold our leather laces together while we do our wrap and the reason we left a three inch tail on this is because this is going to be not just our one end is going to be our loop but the other end is going to be what we pull the loop through with for the wrap and actually since we're doing multiple strands of leather cord putting together this technically is called seizing when you're doing multiple strands when it's a single strand and you're just finishing it off at the end it's called wrapping. But for this, it is seizing. So I'm going to come down a little bit from the center tying, and now I'm going to go back up towards the loop. And the reason I'm doing this is to even things out a bit. And I do want to continue to come up as high as possible above the loop because the loop does have to have something to disappear behind. Alright, so now I'm going to pull my cord tip through the loop, hold on to it and pull, and I'm going to pull that until I feel that it has pulled all the way back down to itself where we we tied our knot earlier 
And now we're going to trim off our, our loose ends. So what this is going to do is it's going to just give us enough hold for to do our braid. All right, so now I'm going to tie this off to my stand on my handy cords that I keep here for holding on to things. And now we're going to do a four strand braid for roughly a three inch length. So what I want are, I want to designate center strands and outer strands. And I'm going to start from the left. I'm going to go over always start your outside cord is going to go over the first cord and under the next cord and also your outside strand it's this cord wherever it came out is going to dictate how this one starts and since this came under it's going the outside outer cord is needing to go underneath here and so now the outer cord on the left side is going to go over and under and the outer cord on this side is going to go under because it's braiding is a, a form of weaving so that this one's going to go over and then under and again your outside cord it wants to come under and now over and under and again under over and under and the outside cord again it's going to come under again and we're going to continue this for about three inches okay, that should give us our three inches and to help hold our braid in place I'm going to use a larger binder clip just to hang on to things so we don't lose our braid so far so I'll get as close as possible so now it's just going to be a matter of threading on our rune beads so it's going to be a pretty easy pattern it's just going to go two one two one sorry and the leather laces just lace right through these rune beads they're really large beads and then once I get the first two beads on here and pushed up, and you just want to stack your stack stack your laces so they'll go through the beads because they've got a really large hole in them. All right, so once you get your first two beads on and push them up they're going to hold the braid in position and this is going to be really simple we're not really going to use this many beads because what we need to do is make sure we've got enough length for the braids at the other end so we're just going to be putting on five beads So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do more braiding, another three inches of braiding, and I'll finish it with the, the whip knot. And then we're going to do a Turk's head knot for the closure. So I will come back. I'm going to finish this braiding and do this whipping off camera and come back and we'll do the Turk's head knot together. Okay, so now we're back. We've got all the the braiding is done and the, the whipping seizing is at the other end so this is roughly three inches of braiding on either side of the beads and we've used five of our Nordic rune beads all right so now what we're going to be doing is for the closure on this it's going to be basically a, a sliding closure 
and what we're going to be doing is a Turk's Head Knot. So remember I had this little glass bottle earlier? This is what's going to help us do our Turk's Head Knot. It's easy because we're going to slide our four little ends of our cord in here and we're going to start the Turk's Head Knot on this bottle. We'll, we'll, we'll pull the cords back out. We'll be putting them back in the bottle when it comes time to actually transferring the Turk's Head Knot to the piece, but we're going to get it started on here because it's just really a lot easier to do a Turk's Head Knot in the round. And basically what this bottle is, it's this is what I use in my bead stash for my beads. And this is actually a scientific specimen bottle that I got at the bookstore from our local university. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our two foot piece of cord and a bit of tape to anchor our cord so we don't lose track of where we start at. And I'm just going to tape the cord just to one end of the bottle. It doesn't matter where you, you tape that to because that's what's going to help us start our knot. And then at some point we're going to have to be lacing our knot back and forth through itself. So we really need to make use of a large eye tapestry needle to help us do this part. But I'm going to start without the tapestry needle and then I'll thread the needle. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and thread the needle now. Make it easier for you guys to keep track of what I'm doing. So the wax linen goes through the needle pretty easy because it's really a large eye tapestry needle. And the reason you want to use a tapestry needle is that it's got a blunt end and you're not going to stab yourself or your cord with it. So for the Turk's head knot, we start by wrapping around the back side of our base, crossing over in the front, and wrapping back around again, and you just have to you have to hold on to your cord so it doesn't slide around. And now we're going to we're going to take our tapestry needle with our cord on it, come up from behind our cord from the initial starting point. We're going to cross over this part and go down behind here. And basically what that does is it's a hitch knot to begin with. And if you were just doing this particular hitch knot, you would be finished. Um, but for the hitch knot itself, your, cor your cords wouldn't be spaced in the back. So now what we're going to do is we're going to roll our piece around to the back. And we've got our cord on the left and on the right. What we need to do is get our left cord to go up over the top of our right cord, which just takes a little bit of coercion to get that left cord to go underneath the right cord and still be able to see what we're doing. So we've ca caused a crisscross. So this cord, the Turks had not to begin, it's all about overs and unders. And here, our cord has come under this cord We've got cords that are crossing, and so now this cord has gone under this part of the cord. So what, since we're coming from an under here, and there's an under there, we want to go over here and under there. So we're going to over and under. And again, you don't want to pull your cords so tight that you lose the shape that you're starting to create. And so now we're back to where we started at. So our cord is right alongside our origination section of the cord. And one thing we want to do at this point right here, all these little X's, we want to try to balance them out in terms of positioning on our piece. Because it's at this point that we're going to start doubling and tripling our cord. So what this is going to be, it's a, it's a three lead, four turn, four bend um, not, Turks head knot. So the bends are 
each time the chord creates a loop. So it's one, two, three, four of them. And the three leads are the times that the chord is crossing itself. So it crosses itself three times. So now we're just going to be following our chord around three, two more times. And it's really important to keep track of where you're at and that your chord lays to the right of the previous round on the, that section of the lead. And you do want to make sure that everything is still spaced out so you're not losing track of where you're at in your Turk's Head Knot. And that your cord is still laying up next to the, next alongside the previous section of the lead. That also will help you not get lost in where you're at. And just be care be just go slow. And remember, the wax linen is a bit sticky, and it will start grabbing onto itself. So it's just a matter of following the leads because. Basically, what a Turk's Head Knot is that you are braiding in the round. So the beginning, those hit, that hitch, and then the twist, that's really all there is to the basic four bend, three lead Turk's Head Knot. When you start adding additional bends to it, that just increases the complexity a bit, but it's not that hard to do. So I've got a video, if you haven't seen it yet, on the Turk's Head Knot. So I'm just following my original strand, and now I'm on its second round, going around. Actually, I've now moved on to second yeah, second round on the third lead. Oh, I've completed the second round on the third lead. All right, so now we're going to start the third, third round. And again, I'm just following my original cord as it goes around back and forth in the braid and making sure I don't lose track of where I'm at. Always laying your cord to the right of the previous part the previous section of the cord. So now we're back at the beginning. So what we're going to do at this point, we're, we can take it off the needle because it's not the needle isn't needed anymore. But what we want to do is we want to tighten this up as much as we can on this piece to remove slack because once we transfer this to the bracelet, we're going to have to continue to remove slack, but we want to get this as small and tight as possible right now so we have less slack to take out later. So this is where our cord started, and we want to really go two bends away. And actually at this point we're going to take our knitting needle because it has a nice tip on it going to get up underneath the cord and we're going to give it a tug. And what this tug is doing is it's starting to pull the excess slack out of our knot. And right now it's not really that important to keep the, the tape on our piece anymore because we're just going to be spinning it around. Alright, so we're getting the slack out. So we need to continue to follow that part of the strand all the way around the piece. So we go to every other bend and we work on getting a hold of our cord and pulling out the slack. And this is where it's really important to not let your cords get crossed and again, continue to gently pull out the slack. And now we're back at the beginning. And you'll see this tail that we started with for the finish, it was a little bit shorter, now it's a bit longer. 
because we've taken up the slack from the knot. Okay, at this point, we're going to transfer this onto our bracelet. So the easiest way to transfer is just to slide our strands inside our tube and pull it, pull it off. All right, and what we want to do is have our strands from the other direction go through here as well. So now we have all eight strands going through our Turk's head knot. And what I'm wanting to do is pull it up as tight as possible um, for our ends to get as close to where our whipping is at. So when I do this final pull through on tightening up, and this is actually, you're going to want it, there's a lot of, lot of give here. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go around this at least twice for pulling up, pulling out the slack. Because if you do too much at once, it kind of distorts things a little bit. And what you could do to help yourself is what I'm doing right now is I'm pushing on the, the Turk's head knot to um, make it a bit more gappy. So when you start pulling out the rest of the slack, it's a little easier to keep track of where you're at. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go one, two, two bites away from the start. And actually I'm gonna hang on to it here and pull my cord from the other end to pull it down a bit. And that makes this end of the cord a little bit longer and a little easier to hold in place. And I need to make sure that this cord is going to stay to the left of these other cords. And so here's the first bite away. And actually, to give myself a little extra help in keeping track of where I'm at, I'm going to use one of my large binder clips again, just to hold everything in place for me. So when I'm continuing to pulling out the slack here, that it's not going to create a, an issue, that I'm not going to be coming off my leather straps, my leather cording, and that everything is going to behave itself and stay in place enough it's a little bit like herding cats isn't it getting all of your cords to stay in place and get under the clamp at the same time hey that worked okay so I'm starting with the the original section of the cord and I'm pulling out the slack and I'm just doing a small amount at a time and again we're back to our origin so now we've just pulled the end of the cord for the, the slack alright so we do know that this is still quite loose and we want this Turk's head not to be snug so when we it this is our adjustment connection here on our bracelet so as we adjust it to put it off and on, that we're not going to actually pull things out, that this actually is going to hold things in place the way we want. So I'm going to continue to tighten this up and I'll be back in a bit. All right, so here I'm back. What I've done is I wound up going around this a full four times for tightening up pulling out the slack on my knot to get it down to this size. And the second two times that I went around, I went around in reverse, uh, following the longer end of the lead back around to create, to get some more length on the shorter end of the, the lead. And also what I did was I realized that this was just too big and bulky. So I, I got a piece couple of pieces of scrap cord and tied them around my leather straps to hold them out of out of the way for me. And now I think I've got this 
Turk's Head Knot down to the size that I want. And typically on Turk's Head Knot, what you would be doing is you're embedding your cord ends into the knot and tying it off from there, but we can't actually access inside the knot because of the way we're using it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tie my ends together with a square knot. So that's going to actually add to a little bit more of the tension on our piece. Let me make sure I get my square knot going the right direction. Yeah. So that's a proper square knot. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tapestry needle and I'm going to embed my ends into the knot. Basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a fourth, fourth round on my lacing of my knot, which is not, not really a bad thing to do. Fourth, fourth time round looks, looks very pretty. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to, I'm embedding my ends into my knot. When I get this end of the cord down to a point where it's getting a bit on the shorter side, I'll be able to trim it off because it should stay put. It's the nature of the wax linen to actually hang on to itself. Now I'm going to take the other end of my cord, my wax linen, thread it through, and I'm working it the opposite direction and I'll be meeting up with the four strands going from this direction. All right, I'm coming out between strands right there. So I've got four and four and four, and those are four and this one is three so what I want to do is I want to continue with following this this strand here I know I'm crossing over because I, I'm working it from two ends so this time I'm kind of breaking the rule a little bit just so I can continue to turn my three strand to a four strand and this is the last one Alright, so what we're going to be doing now is to make sure that our cord doesn't come out of our Turk's Head Knot, we're going to be tying a knot in the end of each one of our strands. And because we got a little close to the end on these, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Let's start with the longer one so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just doing an overhand knot at the end of each of our strands. And I'll get this done on all of our strands and be back in bed. Alright, and now we have it all finished. So this is our Nordic Rune leather braided um, adjustable bracelet. But I hope you enjoyed this one and we're going to start doing a second one shortly.